Hello, welcome back to Marvel <laughs> Live here at San Diego Comic Con 2019, presented by TikTok. Uh, we're hanging out here on the deck, reading some comics, and hanging out with the very wonderful Daryl McDaniels, aka DMC. Welcome, sir. What's up? I'm glad to be here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just, place to be. I just yes. happened to pick up your comic. Yes. <laughs> I just noticed it. Uh, now it says here these these are your stories, but you worked with Amy Chu and Dennis. Cowan. Yes, Amy Chu. <laughs> Wherever you are, I love you. <laughs> yeah, Shout out to Shout out yeah that, that's my crew. Um, I work with some very, very gifted and talented folks who, who have been doing legendary, iconic work, but when they get around me for some reason, they act like it's the first time doing anything. <laughs> well, Dennis Cohen is a legitimate Marvel legend. Exactly. Yeah, so it's much crazy. Work. I mean, you know, and it's it's, it's an honor and privilege because. When I started um, Daryl Makes Comics, it was just to be a tribute and celebration of what makes comic books great to every generation. If you're one years old or if you're one million years old, <laughs> I want you to like the comic book. Because when I was a kid growing up, Marvel comic books was my whole everything. It was my Bible. Stan Lee, rest in peace, he created a monster. <laughs> and, you know, what was beautiful about it was I went to Catholic school my whole life. But I was a straight A student, by the way, always on the honor roll and very proud of that. Listen but up, kids. I wasn't in a gang. I didn't sell drugs. You know what I'm saying? So I was this geeky, nerdy little kid that wore glasses that was a brainiac. So I really didn't have anything that I could identify with in the world. But it was those Marvel comic books. You know what I'm saying? Now, Batman and everybody was cool. Never but remember, Gotham and Metropolis was fictional. Stan Lee was brilliant because he put the superheroes really in New York. So to me, that wasn't make-believe. It was real. <laughs> yeah. Think about it like this. Why do you think my whole career, I shouted, I'm DMC. I live in Queens. Kings from Queens. My name's John Mecca. When I found out that Peter Parker lived in Queens, <laughs> it was unbelievable. Now, yes. But it, 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 it resonated with me. You know what I'm saying? It, it was my perfect universe. Yeah. Now, uh, you, you said you love comics your whole life. Can you remember yeah. your first experience with Marvel Comics? Like that first moment. There was the time before you didn't, didn't know comics. Right, right, The time right. you did. Can you remember that first? The first comic. My brother was three years older than me. I think I was... I might have been eight years old. Because, I mean, I brought my first comic book was when I was in kindergarten. I couldn't even read. <laughs> <laughs> but when I started realizing and comprehending what was going on, it probably was Captain America. Mm -hmm. It was a Captain America. Me and my brother, we had an attic full of comic books. But it was Captain America that I resonated with the most. And it was funny. My brother used to always tease me. He used to always go, D, I'm sorry to say you'll never have blonde hair like Steve Rogers. <laughs> <laughs> and I wanted to kill him. <laughs> but Captain America was the first um, comic book that captivated me. Even at a young age, the stories were so compelling. And what he was trying to hold on to, his values, I could really relate to that. Because mm -hmm. I felt out of place. You know, he was frozen and he comes back and he's in a <laughs> world where everybody's doing all this other stuff. So he had to look deep down inside of himself and stick to what he felt was right, what was correct for people. So me, I felt out of place because I was a Catholic school kid growing up around all these public schoolers. You know what I'm saying? So it was uh, um, Steve Rogers, Captain America, who gave me um, the, the, the will to not be ashamed to survive as I was. Yeah. What's, what's Comic-Con like for you? Like coming here, you know, you fans of all kinds yeah it's ridiculous first of all it's the most beautiful place on the planet <laughs> and what i mean by that you got people from all over the world from different race creeds religions and colors from all over the world and we're here for one thing and what i like to do is they always try to put me at the booth like i'm this big celebrity and stuff i don't like over there i like to get out on the floor and walk around you know what i'm saying and one of the things that i use that makes it possible for me to do it, everybody was going, yo, is that DMC, is that DMC? <laughs> and I hear them saying, so, no, no, I just look like him. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, they don't know no better you're until like, they see me at the booth and they get yeah. you know, mad at me. <laughs> but it's beautiful here because when you think about people in general, we are products of pop culture. Like I said before you, I am Marvel comic books. I am the Monsters. I am the Brady Bunch. I am the Jetsons. I am everything. I am Star Wars. I am Bruce Lee. All of those things make us who we are. A lot of times we think that 
um, things were created for us. Marvel Comics exists because of me. Because I'm in this universe, it had to exist. It had to be <laughs> here for me to assist us all on our journey. You know what I'm saying? So when I'm here, I always tell the little kids, man, love those words make believe. Because make believe is real. Because you make the world believe who you are, what you are. You relate to characters, you relate to stories because there's pieces of you in that. It's like the Marvel Universe was writing who I was. And it all came to fruition because one day I was sitting there, it was like uh, seventh grade, and I noticed something. In the Marvel Universe, Thor is the son of Odin from Asgard. He has a brother named Loki, and he got a hammer. And I saw something that was comparable to what I am in this universe. I was like, well, I'm Daryl. I got a brother named Alfred. I got a father named Bifer, and I got a Mike. <laughs> so Thor allowed me to become, making believe I was the most powerful entity in the hip hop universe. Thor allowed me to have the confidence to become son of Bifred, brother of Al. <laughs> Dad of my mother and runs my pal. It's McDaniels, not McDonald's. These rhymes are Daryl's, those burgers are Ronald's. I ran down my family tree, my mother, my father, my brother and me. I saw th things in the Marvel Universe Peter Parker lived in Queens. He was smart like me. He was awkward like me, so I didn't feel alone. So it allowed me to manifest all those true um, talents, abilities, ideas, and concepts that were in Peter. I found out that I have them, and I wasn't afraid to share myself with the world. And that's the beautiful thing about Comic-Con. We're here sharing ourselves to, to the world through this vehicle that uh, um, touches us all. See, even in the way you talk, you have that Stan Lee oration. Yeah. yeah. Like, I mean, he created a monster. <laughs> DMC in a place to be. Daryl makes comics just like Stan Lee. See, okay. Captain America, Civil War. Whose side you're on? Who you fighting for? Tony Starks wants to obey the law, so Mr. Steve Rogers has to go outlaw. What would you do if you had to fight and give up your life for what you believe is right? Deep down inside, do you know the answer? Do you have the pride of the Black Panther? Would you jump on a team like Spider-Man? Cause you can jump on a wall like a spider can? Or would you say, oh no, I can't man, and try to do it big like you was Ant-Man? Life is full of many decisions. You gotta have the vision and the wisdom of vision. A superhero like D, if I go to war, I am coming like the Hulk in the mighty Thor. Yeah. Shut the live stream so, down. No, no, That's no. it. That's it. it. I, mean, Marvel, I mean, Marvel is marvelous because, it, you know, it made me and it encouraged me to have the confidence to exist in multiple universes. And you do because now you have your own comic. Yes. You have yes. DMC. Yes. Now tell us about this comic. You look incredible. This is thank great. you. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I wanted to do something that would be respected and honored by all fans of comic books. It's just, like this is not a self ego project. I wanted to do something that was going to celebrate what makes comic books great to every generation 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, and the future. So I wanted to do that. And the, the people say this is so well done. That's because I'm a student of Marvel. Now, how this came about was like this three years ago, I went to a music meeting. And like I said earlier, we are all connected no matter where we come from, whatever country. You know, everybody that loves Marvel, we we did something that brought us all together as one family, even though we don't have the same mothers and fathers. So I go to a music meeting to talk about music. And I walk in this music meeting, and um, I'm meeting with a young man named Riggs Morales, who, by the way, was Eminem's right-hand man, A&R, up at Shady Records. And Eminem is one of us. <laughs> Eminem, his whole house is plastered with Marvel. He probably wipes his behind with Spider-Man toilet paper. <laughs> I mean, he's one of us. Big shout out to Eminem. That's a vision so, right there. That's so <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm meeting with um, Riggs Morales, and he says these words to me. He says, yo, D, I'm usually very professional. I usually keep it business, but, and he uses these words, but you was like my superhero, man, the way Run DMC looked and the way we rapped and stuff like that. And he just asked me, what was it like when you was a kid? And I told him what I just told you. Well, um, I went to Catholic school my whole life, and all I did was read, collect, and draw comic books, Marvel comic books especially. So we sat there for three hours 
We didn't talk no hip hop. We didn't talk no music. We talked about Marvel comic books. After we finished, he says, D, you should do a comic book. I go, nope. Go watch it. <laughs> and he says, why not? I said, I'm a geek and a nerd. And we are very critical. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> this culture is sacred. I don't want my fellow geeks and nerds mad at me because thinking I'm a rapper and because I had a hit record, I could do everything. Because mm -hmm. rappers have a bad habit of ruining everything. <laughs> so he was like, yo, D, that's, that's very cool that you think like that. But he said, the comic book is your foundation. If, if, if I never had Marvel comic books, I would have never got on a mic. Mm. I would not put that in my hand when it's that. Get it off me. <laughs> but since I read Marvel comic books, I'm confident enough to partake <laughs> of that adventure. So he said, D, you can do with a comic book the same thing you've been doing with your music for the last 35 years. And I was like, what's that? Inspire, motivate, educate, and entertain. Because that's what Marvel did for both of us. I lived in Queens, he lived in the Bronx. He's Puerto Rican, I'm African American. But we had that in common and we were inspired the same way. So he says, D, you, could, you should do the comic book. Once he told me that, I said, cool. Then he says this, you know you can't use Marvel, right? Because I wanted to be Marvel too. <laughs> you know, literally, Marvel too. DMC's put in, he said, you can't use Marvel. What would you call your comic book? And remember I said, we already, before we get impressed by Star Wars and Marvel and Fred Flintstone and Bugs Bunny and Woody Woodpecker, we are already those things. So I was sitting there, I was like, man, I can't use Marvel. Pissed me off. But then I was like, okay, I'm DMC. You know what? I'm going to call my company. Daryl makes comics, DMC, because that's what I'm going to be doing. So that was the inspiration and the motivation for us to create a celebration of the things that we felt and experienced, all because of these comic books that are marvelously made by Marvels that touched me since I was in kindergarten. Unbelievable. And, and that's it. how this came about. Well, we uh, Issue number three is out now. We're currently work, working on issue number four. And uh, like you said, I have Amy Chu on my team, mm -hmm. and she's the greatest. She's going to help us continue to do it right and even better. If you didn't need another selling point, on the cover there is a, a giant robot that has speakers on it. Uh, this, yes. I, I want this. I want both of these action figures. Yes. Oh, oh, really? Yes. I want action both of these figures, action yes. figures on my mantle. We have to go there. And we, you know, <laughs> it's funny. The first year we got approached about doing cartoons, about doing the action figures, but we wanted to get at least four or five books out because we want to. We want the attention to be on the comics first. It's because of the comic books. Yeah. Because without us, there's nothing. Yeah. So action figures is coming. We hope. We definitely want to do a cartoon and. We definitely want to follow in the footsteps of, of Marvel, man. Y'all created a great universe, and I'm just happy to be living in it. <laughs> well, you know, I'm always curious, because you've come by and seen us a few times oh, over the, the years. Because yeah. you like to hang out with us. Of course, yeah. Um, I can't believe I'm here. <laughs> and it, you just am always constantly amazed me. Like, you were just freestyling a, a little bit. But if you were going to freestyle battle someone in the Marvel universe, who would you choose and why? It would be Luke Cage. All right. It would be Luke Cage because he's the hero for hire. He's somewhat overlooked a lot of times. Like he's as bad as superhero, if I could say that. Yeah. Like he's he's really badass. And he's also from the hood. You know what I'm saying? So I know he knows about the King of Rock. I know he <laughs> knows Wu Tang. I know he knows Biggie and stuff like that. So I just wanted to see how cool Luke Cage really is. Like Luke Cage, I'm a hero for hire. Raised in the age of the vinyl record buyer. They came to burn my kingdom so they all brought fire. When that didn't work, they called me a liar. To tell you the truth, my kingdom can't be burnt. And on that day, this is something they learned. Immortality, see it has to be earned. I was bitten by a vampire and I couldn't be turned. <laughs> DJ's breaking as I rock this mic. So devastating, watch they all take flight. For this generation, here's a little insight. Rappers nowadays can't rhyme or write. <laughs> they need to learn a lesson from Lauren in light or Queen Latifah. Watch them recite. If you disrespect my women, there is going to be a fight. 
a lot of fake rappers is dying tonight. Oh, I would have spit that in Luke Cage, but I know. Don't sleep on him. <laughs> don't sleep on Luke. I know he got balls. <laughs> just take his chain and just go. Yeah. Exactly. And that's his exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I mean, Luke's so cool. His microphone cord probably looks like a chain. Oh, oh, yeah. And raise a million pounds. Right? <laughs> yeah, I, I was thinking about. You know, in hip hop, we have amazing groups. Run DNC. You talked about Wu Tang. Yeah, we. And they're like superheroes. superheroes. They're like they, superhero yes, teams. We are. Run DMC. Who do you look at as Run DMC as Wu Tang? Like, what are their equivalents in the Marvel universe? Uh, Run DMC. I mean, Wu Tang is definitely the Avengers. Okay. Okay. There's you know a lot. Mm. Run DMC is more like the Defenders. Ooh. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Houses. Which one? But we could be in the we 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 were in the Avengers. In the Avengers. Like yeah. But then we went down to the Avengers. I mean, because it was only just me, Run, Jay, um, our road crew. Because the Avengers, the Wu Tang is the Avengers. <laughs> all of those characters, all those personalities. You know what I'm saying? So Run DFC will be the Defenders. And you know, Jam Master Jay, rest in peace. He went on to the next um the next universe or whatever like that. So when Jam Master Jay left to go to the alternate universe that me and Run, we would join the actual Avengers. <laughs> so we would be Avengers who would actually be defenders avenging and defending for the people that need avenging. That just, uh, something like that. That, that just out. Something like that. Really? Yeah. Well, something like that. <laughs> everybody at home, go check out DMC 1 through 3 now. Check it out. Yep, check it out. And thank you so much for hanging out with us. No, thank you. Thank you. This is like a play. Look, truth be told, y'all, I only put out the book so I could come hang with you. <laughs> uh, and of course, you're going to be at booth 3919. You're going to be performing yes, at yes. the Flux Light Club. So, yeah, I'm putting on a show tonight. Yeah, so if you ain't doing nothing, come check out the party. Hell yeah. You're going to say all your favorite rhymes and records and Hopefully all that Luke cool Asian stuff. Show up. Hopefully, Hopefully yeah, he, he heard. Somebody he called him. He heard. <laughs> He's probably on his way right now. <laughs> well, thank you so much, uh, Dale. Thank, thank you so much for, for joining us.